Hi, my name is Arturo J. Corses, and I'm a shock expert. Now here, this is an example of a great, sorry, this is an example of a great white shark. As you can see, it has an enormous jaw and huge teeth. And it also has small eyes, because it can't really see well. It has a very large tail and a very large dorsal fin. It also has these fins, but I'm not really sure what these fins are called. So, let's go. We're gonna see this shark in action. The great white shark. Let's go. By the way, do you like sharks? So do I. Now, let's continue our journey to see the great white, great white shark in action. <coughs> now, as you can see, in the jungles of Peru, we're trying to look for a lake called Sabatoces. The reason it's Sabatoces is because a Spanish con conqueror founded the lake. And it was once said that there was a huge great white shark in it. So, let's go find it. Oh, by the way, as you can see, these flowers are called the Peruvian Guatacala. It kind of sounds like Guatemala, but it's not. The Peruvian Guatacala has no real niche in its environment. It actually has, serves no purpose. Nothing eats it and nothing, it does nothing to do anything to its environment. So let's keep on going. These are the jungles of Peru. Is that it? There it is! The Lake of Sabatathas. Right there. Well, obviously we can't get through this jungle, we're going to have to go back around. As you can hear, see here, the Peruvian Guatacala. It's a pretty rocky path. You might want to be careful. Sometimes rocks fall down from above. Ah! Whoa! Ah. <laughs> you also have to be extremely careful by these rather thorny plants. I do believe they're called the Ornithocanthus. The Ornithocanthus was not founded by a Spanish conqueror. It was actually founded by a paleontologist. That's why it sounds similar to... <laughs> That's why it sounds similar to the dinosaur Orthithicantis. This one is Orthithicantis. <laughs> now let's continue on. <laughs> but careful, there might be some rocks! Oh. Quickly, onto the rocky path. As you can see, all these rocks, look, come this way. But we're going to try and find this great white shark in the lake, the, in the lake of Sabatathas. This is it, the lake of Sabatathas. As you can see, you have some fish. These here, orange, are small koi. And this big one here is a big koi. <laughs> and these white ones, they are called white ones and black ones and these gray ones here, sort of gray. Those, they are called the Cajajas. The Cajajas were founded by a Spanish conqueror, which is why you will see it has such a weird name. Now I'm going to try and scoop one up. That's Big Mama, I believe. It's so big. I, she's probably pregnant. These mate in an interesting way. These killer koi, the big koi, they are very interesting. It goes inside of the other koi, and inside the other koi reproduces with another koi. Do you understand? You see, this koi probably has two smaller koi, these, inside of it. It does not reproduce. 
There is one mother koi. It's called the queen koi. It's extremely large. And all it does is give birth to koi. And it gives birth to small koi and it gives birth to large koi. The large koi store two little kois inside of it and they reproduce inside of the large koi, creating another koi. <laughs> so in the end, out of the big koi will come the two parent kois and a baby koi. And the queen koi, which is probably that white one. No, that can't be it. Queen kois can range up to eight to seven, seven to eight feet in length. So, it's obviously not here. It's probably in the safety of its den. So, we will continue on the journey. Whoa, what is that? Whoa! <laughs> get back, get back, get back. Did you see that water spout? We're gonna take a quick glance at it, okay? We're gonna take a quick glance. Quick glance. <laughs> quick glance. Now, I don't know what it was. I do believe it was a great red shark. I'm gonna keep going. We're going to try to ignore the big and small koi. We're gonna try and find it, okay? Let's go. This must come from by the pattern markings on it and by the texture and by the taste it must come from a Peruvian Indian tribe called the Atala Akuma the Atala Akuma eat these little cacaras but they do not touch the kois because they believe that the kois are sacred creatures that reproduce to make more koi the cacaras are a good food source so, we leave this here. We don't want to make the Peruvian Indians mad, don't we? Now let's continue. Here it is. This spout. It might come from two great white chalks reproducing. They tend to do this. I'm going to be stupid and stick my hand in the water. Yes, this is definitely it. I can smell, I can feel the warmth. There are definitely two great white shark reproducing down there. We have to find a way to get down there. We're going to have to send in special marine aquatics team. But we're in Peru and we don't have them, so let's keep going. <laughs>